Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I'm a watercolor artist. Today I'm taking you guys outside to paint some scenery in the beautiful Okanagan. Opus right now has their plain air challenge, which means painting outdoors. So I hope you guys enjoy painting with me. Let's get started. All right, so first thing I've done to start is just taped off my piece of paper and I've loosely sketched out the shapes that I see in front of me. And we're gonna start first by painting the sky. So I'm gonna go into my blue paint. So I want us to be able to see a little bit of the effect of the clouds that are in front of me. So we're gonna go in with some darker blue at the top here. And now I'm gonna go in with my clean paintbrush and just pick up some of the paint. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna paint will be the water. So again, I'm going in with some blue paint Gonna mix it with a little bit of gray. If I'm looking at the lake in front of me, it's not super bright blue. So I'm just gonna tone down the color that I have a little bit. Some black and give it sort of a smoky blue color, which the sky is actually a little bit smoky today. So. And I'm just following those guidelines that I've drawn already. So if any of you have watched any of my other paintings with a lot of scenery, you'll know that a big part of it is just trusting the process. And we do a lot of layering. So it's a lot of jumping around from spot to spot just to sort of build on our painting as we go. I'm just gonna add a bit more color to the back here. All right, so the next thing that I want to paint is just a little bit of the scenery that's right in front of me. So the rocks and the ground, the angle that I'm going at sort of starts from behind these behind branches to the right of me here. So, so I'm gonna get myself some gray paint and we're just gonna start with some of this foreground. All right, so I'm just gonna continue adding in a gray base color here. And just sort of just filling it in so that it's in the background of anything else we add on top. So again, I'm not being too precise with this. I'm, I'm just doing loose strokes with my paintbrush.
All right, so next I'm gonna go in and add just some of the trees and shades of the houses that I see off in the distance here. And with this painting, I'm not being too precise with any of it. I'm just doing a loose scenery painting. So the main colors that I can see are green and brown. So I'm just going to do a mix. And from this view, it's a mixture of different types of trees. So we're just gonna dot them in, but I'm gonna make my shapes as I go back. I'm gonna make them smaller and smaller just to give you that perspective. So I'm using a mixture of greens here. I have one that's a little bit more blue toned and one that's a little bit more yellow toned, just to add some depth into my painting. And we're gonna go in and add more detail in a bit. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is paint the mountains in. When I'm looking them off in the distance, I can see that they're blue with a little bit of brown in them. So I'm, yeah, so I'm going to use those colors. I'm just gonna make sure that the color is a little bit different from the lake and the sky that's above and below it. So again, I'm gonna take a bit of a gray blue here. So I'm now gonna mix some brown into the one that's already dry. So you'll notice right away, it starts adding a little bit more definition to the mountain. We're gonna do the same on this one. Now with the same color that I've mixed, I'm actually gonna go into my rocks here and add it in. All right, so we're just gonna continue working on the rocks a little bit by adding just some more shading to them. 
make them stand out a bit more. So I'm mixing gray and brown here. And I'm now going in with a bit of a darker color just to get some more definition. Now the reference photo that I took has these bushes in the side. So the next thing that I'm gonna paint is the green bush right in front here. So for this green, I want one that's a little bit more yellowy. So I'm just gonna mix it on my pal palette with some of the yellow that I have here. Just to get it nice and bright. One thing that you'll notice, especially when you're painting outside, is that a lot of the colors on your palette are often, if it's like a true green or true blue as part of the primary colors, they're often very bright. But when you're looking around, everything has different tones in it in nature. So often I'll try to tone down the bright green that I have by adding some yellow or some brown to it, just to give it more of a natural look. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go into the lake and add our detail there. So here I'm going with my small brush and I'm mixing some blue with some gray. And if I'm looking off at the lake, I can kind of see how the water moves sort of across my view that I have of it in, in a horizontal line. So I'm going to work with that and just start painting in some detail. So I'm just gonna move across my page horizontally. Start adding in some shading there. So I can see that there's a darker spot right below this mountain here that I've painted. So I'm going to add more color in there.
All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is paint the trees that are bordering along the water. So I'm gonna go in and these ones, we're just doing little shapes, but I'm gonna make them smaller just cause they're farther away. Um, and just give that definition to the lake so that we can see where it starts. So I'm just doing little vertical lines going all along because it looks like there's trees all along the water. And then I'm gonna go back and sort of blend it into the rest of my painting in a bit here. So I'm using my small paintbrush for this. And just so that I don't miss it later, when I'm looking, I can see that it looks like there's some fields sort of in the middle here. So I'm just gonna paint them in with some nice green. The Okanagan is so beautiful in that we have a lot of wineries and different farms and things. So I love coming and looking just at the scenery because you see such a mixture of the trees, the mountains, the wineries, the vineyards. It's so beautiful. So now I'm gonna work my way down from what I've already painted here. And I'm just following the same concept. So now I'm just going in and filling in sort of all this middle space here with, it's a mixture of trees and houses. So I'm gonna add some brown in after. I want it to be an out of focus abstract look. So I'm, yeah, continuing to just paint the general shapes of the tops of trees without actually painting all the individual trees. Some more detail to this foreground here. And I'm also trying to be careful to leave some white space on my painting. 
Just because sometimes painting with scenery, it's easy to paint everything dark and then it's hard to actually see definition between different objects. So just working on that. All right, so now I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of brown and I'm just adding it in spots. So the brown is meant to just give the effect of the roofs of the houses. Um, but because I'm painting it out of focus, then I can, again, just like the trees, just paint it in in spots, but I'm doing it, it um, I'm doing it more spaced out. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna add some details to our mountains. So this time I wanna go in with a bit of a darker color. But again, as I mentioned before, they're a very gray blue color. So I'm gonna stick with that. So we'll start with this little one here, which I can see that the majority of the dark color is at the top. So we're gonna go in. And the paint I have is a bit too light, so I'm just gonna add some more. I'll do the same thing with this mountain here, just by adding in the gray. And I'm following along the top and then I'm just moving my paintbrush in. So I can see that the shading is sort of in patches, but also when I'm looking, I can kind of see where the shadows go and move across the mountain. So my goal is to try to very loosely mimic what I'm seeing. And I'm going a little bit darker right along the edge just to give more contrast against the sky that's in behind. And we're gonna do the same moving up for this mountain. And then I'm gonna leave the one that's in behind a little bit lighter. Now, because it is the Okanagan, which is known to be semi-desert, you can see a lot of brown off in the hills there. So we're just gonna add that in. It tends towards the base of the mountains. So I'm gonna add that in right along the edge of the water here. Then I'm gonna do the same with this mountain that we have on the right side there. Just add more of this sandy brown color. Now with this mountain that's sitting in behind, I do want to add some shading, but I'm just gonna keep it much lighter because I want it to still be visible that that mountain is in behind the other two. So I'm gonna go in with this gray color again, but not nearly as dark as the last one. And I'm just adding where I see some shading when I'm looking off in the distance. So very subtle with that one. So one thing that I notice that friends will often point out about me when I'm out and looking at scenery is that I always notice what colors are there and what colors are contrasting. And that's one thing that the more you paint, especially if you're painting a lot of stuff in nature, you'll start to pick up that, you know, if it's a mountain that's covered in trees when it's off in the distance, it's usually blue instead of green. So you start to notice these things. And as you come, if you guys come and practice just painting scenery wherever you are, 
it's, yeah, it's such a good and fun thing to just pay attention to and start learning how colors work together that way. All right, so I now just wanna go in and add some more definition here, sort of along the edge of the rocks off to where the trees start. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm continuing to add the same green that I was using before, but I'm just gonna go in a little bit more of a structured line this time. Because I don't want it to be too muddied together. I want you just to be able to tell where it starts and where the ground in front of me ends. Right, and now we're gonna add a little bit more detail to these leaves here. So I'm just taking a darker green and going on top of where I've already painted a lot of the leaves. So again, just keeping everything very loose, generally out of focus. And when I'm looking at these branches, I notice that they have some sort of red brown branches in them. Sorry, <laughs> branches that the leaves are on. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and add some little red lines in here. imitate that look. Right, and then the last thing that I'm gonna do is with my trees, just add a little bit more definition in sections. So coming back here, I'm gonna move across where the field would be. Same thing here. And then on the left here, I just want to define sort of this section of trees that looks like it's sitting in front a bit more. So I'm just going to go in with some brighter paint and just create that shadow effect. So again, I'm trying to be careful to not fully fill in the space with green because I still want to leave some white space in there. And that is all we have for our painting of the Okanagan. Um, if at this point I could either keep going, I could add pen or just leave it exactly as is. So I'm gonna leave it as it is with, yeah, just a very loose and not abstracty, but as I said, out of focus look, which, yeah, which I love. That concludes my painting of the Okanagan Valley here with Okanagan Lake. I, at this point, could either keep going and add some more details, but I really like this sort of out of focus look that I have here, so I'm going to leave it at that. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this. If there's any other views or scenery that you want me to paint, leave a comment below and let me know. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.